From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Finding a lot of stories of people who are somewhere between Darwin Award worthy and somewhere between like unsung, very niche heroes or vigilantes. This case falls more, this story falls more on the Darwin Award side of it. There is a person named Lisa Landon of New Hampshire. Lisa Landon is kind of brilliant, kind of brilliant. She's certainly got some chutzpah. She was going to court uh, for drug possession and a stalking case. To be clear, she was the stalker. Lisa Landon was the stalker. And uh, she was going to court in Hillsborough County. However, something bizarre happened in November. The prosecutors of Hillsborough County started to get suspicious. They heard back from a state forensic examiner who had been scheduled to perform what's called a competency evaluation on Landon. It's like, are you fit to stand trial, basically? And the examiner called the prosecutors because they they said, hey, look, I noticed that you all totally dropped the charges against Lisa Landon for drugs and for stalking. Uh, should I... And they, they weren't being hyperbolic. They were just like, look, dude, I got other competency evaluations. Should I move on or do I need to do this since this person is apparently not going to court? The file, th this was news to the prosecutors, by the way. Uh, Assistant County Attorney Patrice Cassian noticed that apparently their office had filed to drop the charges against Landon. and. They were hunting down. Imagine yourself in the office that day. You're hunting down all your colleagues and you're saying like, hey, who let this alleged stalker just back into the wild? That's crazy that no one told me because I'm your boss. I should We should run these things through, uh, through the proper channels. Here's what, here's what happened. Uh, Lisa Landon impersonated a prosecutor and dropped the criminal charges against herself, which is just chef's kiss. I, 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 we hear all the time about how local government databases and interfaces may not be as secure as they should, uh, and this this person gives proof to it. She basically '90s movie hacker style got into the system, posed as a prosecutor, and. Uh, she is now being charged with one charge of false personation, six charges of falsifying physical evidence, and uh, I think I think the stalking is back on <laughs> is back on the docket. So I wanted to bring this kind of like blotter true crime story to you guys because I want your opinion. If someone yeah. is smart enough, capable enough to do this, should they let the charges ride? I mean. I don't, I mean, <laughs> have you seen, I need everybody to go to unionleader.com mm -hmm. and search, search for this, find it and look at Lisa's mugshot. More like a if smug you, shot. If you, if you dude. look at her, if you look at her smirk, <laughs> yeah. she knows what she oh, did. Oh, that was, I mean, dude, it's, it is <laughs> wild. <laughs> Yeah, she's like looking directly into your her soul. Face is front and center there. Uh, yeah. So, so the uh, the thing that's the thing that's interesting about it. I mean, being a little glib, of course, you shouldn't get off of a drug and stalking charge or drug and stalking charges just because uh, you're clever and have a million dollar smirk. So. What she did uh, was exploit the court's electronic filing system. Let's keep in mind also, this is happening during the age of COVID, right? So she's not, 
uh, she doesn't have to be in person as much or as often as someone would ordinarily have to be. Uh, the question now is whether impersonating a prosecutor itself is a crime, in addition to you know submitting fake papers. And that's where it gets kind of interesting because prosecutors are not explicitly mentioned in the list of people you can be prosecuted for impersonating. So is a prosecutor a law enforcement officer? I mean, the answer is probably yes. But if you get get a good uh, like Clarence Darrow type uh, legal lion in the courtroom, maybe they can make an argument, you know? Hey, maybe this will be grounds for a, a competency evaluation that shall fail. Who knows? <laughs> That's amazing. No, you guys, I, I'm I'm going to go ahead and call it. This one's going all the way to the Supreme Court for sure. <laughs> I think you're right on the money with the impersonating prosecutors thing. She she just went on their electronic filing system, submitted some documents, and <laughs> she would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for. <laughs> Those pesky other prosecutors and document filers and checkers. You gotta appreciate the the, the chutzpah, though. You know, just because uh, a lot of times what you see when people do things like this that you think are just impossible, it's just like the opp- finding the opportunity and then taking the risk. You know what I mean? And then seeing where the chips fall. Uh, and you know it can work. Like I don't know. Like I said, I've, I've mentioned. I mean, not on this show, but I've been watching uh, the Fargo TV series a lot. And there are a lot of criminal masterminds in that show that just coast on their ability to do things that they think no one else is brazen enough to do. And and that's a lot of times <laughs> a superpower in and of itself. Very true. Like the guy with the masks at the ATM with the with the old man mask, you know, robbing all the ATMs at the uh, at the casino. You know what I mean? It's just so ridiculous, but but it totally worked for a time. Mm. Or or the uh, oh god, I learned a lot about bank robbers recently uh, when I found out that a friend who had unfortunately passed was a career bank robber. Um, and listen to this show. Uh, and I got to tell you, the bank robbing, first off, did the math for a brain stuff video. You don't make a lot of money, but it encourages creativity. There was a case here in Georgia where somebody uh, robbed, uh, did an impersonation robbery where you pay a bunch of people to be like extras or background actors. And then you dress like that. You have them all dressed the same. You dress like them. You rob the bank. And then that guy, like another guy, uh, Wait, a guy did that and then literally ran to the nearby river where he had a, a inflatable raft waiting and made his getaway. And he's like, he hasn't been caught. Uh, I don't know. We want to we want to hear your stories, folks. What are some of the craziest legal shenanigans or most creative crimes that you've heard about? Uh, or if you wish to remain anonymous, the things you got away with personally. Uh, we won't snitch, but if it's a good story, we would like to share it on air, doing as much as we can to preserve your identity. As McGruff always said, uh, take a bite out of crime. Crime doesn't pay unless you are in politics or banking. Mm-hmm. And he also says Scruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. Scruff McGruff, don't take no guff from crooks. <laughs> 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 